I chose our Bible passages for today, quite a few weeks ago. Little did I know then that Queen Elizabeth would die just a few days before our service today. But it seems to me it is appropriate that we come to the end of our journey through Paul's letter to the Romans, which we started back on the 1st of May, on this Sunday, just a few days after the death of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth. Two endings, both of which look forward to the future ahead. Paul had written to the Romans because he had not yet been able to visit them. Little did he know that one day he would be taken there in captivity and that there he would be executed for his faith in Jesus. Paul ends his letter by sending greetings to the Christians he knew who lived in Rome and he introduces to them those who are with him, probably in the city of Corinth, around 55 AD. He is keen that they know each other as people, as individuals, not just as a named group of Corinthians or Romans. Who are these people that we read of today? Well, they are supporters of Paul. They support his ministry in the city, and they support what Paul has written to the people in Rome. Paul is about to move on, and he leaves the people in Corinth behind, with a knowledge of others in Rome who are not so far away, who may be able to support them in the future. He urges the Romans to hold tight to what Paul teaches them earlier in his letter. They must preserve their unity and not be divided by people who cause dissension and offence or who butter up those who can be flattered while criticising those who are trying to lead the people in following Jesus. Paul's closing sentences reminded me of the end of Matthew's Gospel, which we also heard earlier. Jesus reminds his disciples that he had given them the authority to continue his work. They were doubtful. And we don't know what they doubted, whether it really was Jesus whom they had seen executed on the cross, or if they doubted his authority and his ability to pass it to them, or even if they just felt inadequate for the task of doing what Jesus did. But Jesus reassures them, as he reassures us, that he will be with them always. He had given them a mission to make disciples everywhere they went, and he would go with them to keep them right, to help them when it was difficult, and to show them the way. After the Queen died, someone wrote to me that this loss for Christians of such a figurehead in these times is bad news. However, it seems to me that the Queen's death is a bigger loss to those who don't know Jesus and God. For them, the Queen or King is the ultimate authority who represents the life of the nation wherever they go. The Queen has journeyed with most of us for all of our lives. The new King will be different. There will be changes. How will our nation cope? But for Christians, our ultimate authority is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus and his Father God created the universe and have lived through it for all this time. They have formed the earth and breathed us into being. Jesus was born of Mary, lived and died on the cross and was raised from death and then into eternal life. Jesus is our ultimate authority and he goes on and on and on without an end. Our ultimate authority today is the same person it was last Sunday and from the beginning of time. We need not fear that our work has been wasted and that everything will go out of control. Jesus has given us a purpose to reach all people for him and help them to be followers or disciples of Jesus. He travels with us and shows us the way. What does all this mean for us today? How do we go forward from here? What will be our future? Many of the comments people have made about the Queen in these days 
is that she was brilliant at speaking with people, listening to them carefully and remembering who they were. I confess that I'm not very good at that myself. I forget people's names. I don't always recognise who people are, and I'm not good at making enough time to visit people. But Jesus says that people are important. We see that throughout his three-year ministry. Jesus stopped and made time for people. He asked them what was troubling them. He asked them what they wanted him to do to help them. And he helped them to overcome the barriers that were holding them back. Paul also made time for other people. He even wrote to people he hadn't been to visit yet and introduced them to his friends and fellow workers. That way, if he couldn't go, then his friends in Corinth would be able to help the Roman Christians themselves. Paul walked and talked all over the eastern Mediterranean when they could just have stayed at home in Tarsus or Antioch. Instead, Paul and his friend Silas were sent out to be apostles by the church that was in Antioch where they had been teaching for some time. They went to places that weren't interested and they moved on. They went to places where people were interested, but other people raised a riot and ran them out of town. They saw a vision from God telling them to go to Macedonia, and they went. Eventually they reached Corinth and stayed there, and Paul wrote the letter to the Romans. When Paul was sent out on his missionary journey, he didn't know how it would work out. When Jesus called his disciples to follow him, they didn't know that Jesus would be executed and that they would be called to continue his work. When Elizabeth became queen, she had no idea where that would lead, nor that her reign would last for 70 years. But each of them was faithful to their call. We are called to continue that work, to make disciples of all people, and to trust that Jesus will be with us to the end of the age. Let us follow him. When the future looks bleak, remember that Jesus goes ahead of us. Amen.